Any lingering, lingering disappointment among the players after Tuesday's defeat? Well, I don't think um, they need to sort of berate themselves. The performance was brilliant. Um, and even the penalties were all well struck. So, in terms of what you get from a manager's point of view, I got everything I wanted apart from a goal. We deserved, you know, something out of the game. So, it was bad luck more than anything else because our play in general was of a very high quality and I'm just looking more of the same now going into tomorrow. When you look at the table and how close it is, do you get excited about, about the season? Of course you do, yeah. I mean, it's it's still very early. Maybe ask me that question after 20 games, but then, you know, after six, I'm very, very pleased with the level of performance and the consistency of performance as well. The players are in good condition now and they're starting to really hit top form. So I'm hoping we can carry that on. Every game's different. You know, St Mirren have their own objectives and, you know, they're trying to impress a new manager who's coming through the door. Obviously, they had an adverse result last week, so they'll be looking to bounce back. So, you know, easy games. And I, I'm hoping we get the same kind of performance. It's not guaranteed. But I'm really, really pleased with what I'm seeing at the minute. I think we're, compared to where we were this time last year, I think we're in a better place now. How much do you know about Warren Kearney and what, what do you expect from St Mirren? Well, he, he had a great time in Coleraine. I spoke to him in the summer. Um, he asked me a bit of advice because he was going to be interviewed for the job. Obviously, Al Alan got it originally, and now Oren's got it. So he's very studious, you know, and um, I think he's very well thought of. Um, I think he thinks a lot about the game and how he sets his team up. So, you know, I wish him well. Obviously, not too well tomorrow, but um, it's nice to see another fellow Irishman, you know, doing the stuff in the Premier League here. How big a blow has it been to lose uh, Jamie McLaren to injury for so long? Yeah, I mean, we could have done one the other night. It was tailor made for Jamie. You know, there's some of the chances that we created. You'd expect him to be on the end of quite a few. We're hoping it's not going to be too long term. You know, the scan showed that um, it needs rest, the back, and he needs the strength in certain areas of his core. So. We may not see him this side of the international break, we're hoping to see him maybe after that. Now, Martin Boyle is reportedly uh, on the verge of a call to Australia. What's your reaction to that? Do you think Scotland have missed out? Well, I, I wouldn't rule Scotland out of it just yet. Um, I think Graham got a, a run on it, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know there's interest from Scotland as well and Martin, which I'm delighted. You know, and maybe it'll be down to his own personal preference at the end of it. Um, I'm delighted he's getting the recognition that he deserves for his performances over the last couple of years. Um, so you just have to watch this space. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but it's fantastic recognition for him if he gets called up for either Australia or Scotland. Do you think he's ready for international football? It's a good question. You don't know until you're ready, until you're actually in that environment. I think if you look at his performances in the, in the Premier League over the last year and a bit now, He's one of the best wingers in the country, you know, certainly at this level. So, you know, will he go into that environment and prosper? I hope so. He's a good kid. He's willing to learn. There's been a vast improvement in his mentality and his his, his physicality as well. Um, he's certainly got the equipment to play international football in terms of, you know, his athleticism, his cardiovascular and, and his pace. It's a real asset to have for any team. Um, there are still aspects of his game he, he, he can improve on, but if he did that, he wouldn't be playing for Hibs. He'd be playing at a very, you know, the highest level. So we're just delighted with the progress he's made and delighted for him because he's worked very hard at his game. Do you think he could still progress then? Oh, yeah, I, I, I think there's more to come. I think there's more goals in him. I think um, he can improve on his decision making. His movement off the ball is fantastic, and his dribbling and his pace and running with the ball, which is a very hard thing to do. You know, he's very, very good at that and he's been you know, an absolute star for me in the two, two and a bit years I've been here. So I'd be personally delighted for him if, if that was the case. Has he surprised you with how much he's developed? Or when you first came in, did you look at him as a player thinking he's got so much more to, to, to come? Well, you look at him and you think he's got, definitely got good attributes. You know, he's quick, he's a good finisher. Uh, his movement, like I say, on and off the ball is, is great. and. We decided very, very early on that he would be, you know, in our in our thoughts going forward. I think he's improved a lot 
I think when I first came in, he was on his backside a lot, which annoyed me. So he's learning to ride the tackles a lot better, stay on his feet, get beyond people. And he's been a real asset for us and a real sort of force for us in terms of the way we want to play. And you touched on um, the, the squad as a whole being better prepared um, than it was this time last year. You of course have had a, a lot of departures over the summer, a lot of new arrivals. Is this, as it stands now, is this the, the best hip side that you've had in your, in your time as manager here? That's a hard call to make, you know, the, the, the team in the second half of last season was, was fantastic so we've got a bit to do to, you know, get to that, that level but I'm seeing, you know, shoots of that, there's no question of that, you know, in the last three or four games the, the quality of performance has been brilliant and I couldn't have asked any more from them on Tuesday night and when you see the draw on Wednesday you're obviously disappointed but I've got to take a lot from the performance, the bravery the players showed, the domination of a very good team for long periods in the game, so and the mental strength that that takes as well. So they're, they're slowly but surely improving and getting to where we want to take them. What, what did you make of the SPFL's decision to hold the two games on the, the Sunday at Hamden? Well, you know, we're not in it, so I mean, I can't really comment on it. You know, I think Hearts and Aberdeen are bitterly upset by that, but um, you know, that's a decision that's been the clubs have been told about and. Uh, it's difficult for Aberdeen fans, obviously. You know, half twelve kick off again on a on a Sunday. I think that's you know a big ask of them. So, in terms of you know double header on the same day, it's it's unique. But obviously, the the powers that be have looked into it and felt that's the best way to go. So I can't be I can't be critical of it. It may cause a bit of trouble in Glasgow. So you know maybe the police have been advised on that as well. I'm sure. Do you have sympathy for the likes of Hearts and Aberdeen? Because I mean, Craig Levine this morning was, was pretty pretty angry with the decision. He's described it as madness. I mean, can you kind of see where the likes of Levine would be coming from? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So, again, I can't comment on it because we are not there. But on the outside looking in, it, it's, it's, it's different, to say the least.